am standing here in front of the Egyptian Theater, one of the most famous theaters here in Park City. Cold but hot, having a beautiful, exciting time, and this is just the beginning. I'm excited, we're at Sundance. Thank you so much for coming. I thought the film was awesome. Brilliantly directed. Amazing movie. a complicated love story of a woman whose husband has recently been incarcerated and how she uh, struggles and strives to maintain their marriage from beyond bars. How am I supposed to do this? We'll see each other every weekend. We will talk every day. That's eight years. Five years with good time. I don't want you to stop for me, baby. I knew a number of women growing up, and still do, who were struggling with incarceration in their own lives uh, while they walked around free in the world, not feeling free because they are attached to a man who's not free. And what that does to a woman's spirit, what that does to her own journey. So the story of Middle of Nowhere is really the story of a woman on a journey to herself. And uh, that woman is Ruby, played by the gorgeous Emiazzi Coronaldi. I became involved with Middle of Nowhere um, through an audition. See your name. Hi, Emiati Cornaldi. Um, I came in and um, I'm initially read for another role and then was given the sides for the role of Ruby. Came back, I don't know, maybe two, three times. Um, Ava broke me all the way down each time. This is what we've got right now. It's not good, but it's what we've got. And you will do it. We will see each other on every weekend. You will call me every day. You will tell me about your day, and I will tell you about mine, just like always. We'll see each other every weekend. We will talk every day. You will know about my day, and I'll know about yours, like always. We had choices, luckily, when we were casting in the middle of nowhere because of the success of our previous film, I Will Follow, to maybe get bigger names, but really we wanted to find actors who could bring truth to the part. And when we find a talent like Emiazzi Coronaldi, it um, enhances the narrative because you aren't seeing someone that you know, you're seeing Ruby. I paid every month as stipulated in that payment arrangement made by your accounting department. And uh, then I got a call one day and was told that I got the part and I exclaimed with joy at the fact that Ava DuVernay was really calling me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, yeah, we, we started the, the journey from there. All right, here we go, and roll sound, please. Baby, you got everything going for you. You're coming home. <laughs> as dynamic as Ruby is, um, for me to play opposite that and, and to be sort of in that world where we were trying to figure out um, how to go on from this place that we found ourselves at, this impasse, this, this um, cage love of sorts that we were dealing with, um, where Lion is inside cage and, and Ruby's very light in this way. She was trying to break him out uh, via her love and I thought I have to be a part of it. And also really challenged me. What's going on in here, Derek? What you think's going on in here? Shooting in an actual jail, it definitely fosters, um, whether you're a method actor or whether you, you know, are in the character all day long and choose not to get out of the character or whether you're someone who can go in and out of it, um, that sort of is a happy medium between being a method actor and not necessarily wanting or deciding to operate in a very methodical way. It's a happy medium because it, it sort of forces you um, in a sense to be method, you know, even if you don't want to. So um, I found that even inside this world, you know, and also um, the, the world of visitation, I find that that was even very, very palpable in terms of us as actors being in it and understanding what it must be like to deal with visitation with all of these other people that are visiting their significant loved ones around you. You don't get that private intimate space that you would love to have. From the moment I got here, it wasn't okay. It'll be better. Yeah. I promise. I stopped and I really took some time to think about all of the women that I know that have found themselves literally in the middle of nowhere. A relationship they were in for two, three, four, five years. 
you know, just something where you probably should have exited a long time ago, but for whatever reason, you're still there. And when I really stopped and thought about all those women that had crossed my path, that really gave me all the ammunition that I needed to, to embody Ruby. You can't see two feet in front of you. You know what, Rosie? I don't think you're in any kind of position to give any advice about relationships, so don't. I was just so moved by the fact that there was a young African-American woman who was the central character of this love story, emotional journey. You know, that's something that a lot of times we don't get scripts where we are the central focus. As an actor, you're only as good as your material. And uh, to me, it doesn't matter whether it's a radio, whether it's a play, whether it's a film, whether big budget, small budget, it's about the material. And the writing was so good. And uh, you know, the, the thing that happens when, as an actor, you engage with that kind of writing is that you become a better actor because you are able to realize in yourself what is possible. The day of shooting at the, at the theater with um, Brian, I believe that day shifted things because she was willing to put it out there and let's let's see where we go from here if anywhere but it needs to be put out onto the, onto the table you're not going to ask me about my situation well i figure you tell me when you want me to know i don't know what's going to happen next i'm going to try to be what's happening next I hadn't come across material like this with a largely African-American cast. Often what you get is stereotypes, caricatures, the, the film is very much geared towards a niche market and this felt to me like it had a far-reaching appeal in that it was just a human story as opposed to a black story. He's going through a tough time. Oh, he's going through a tough time? <laughs> I see. The situations in these characters were so real and it's such a cliche to say it was so real feeling because, come on, it's make-believe. <sighs> yep. Is this the way people spend their special day? Hmm? I'm talking here. Oh, no, Mom. I'm not bothering you. But there's something at the core of this film that I don't think we've ever really seen in before and certainly not seen with African Americans. What, you, you working tonight? Yes, I am. But, but you work every other night. How do you know that? Brother's got a good memory, what can I say? <laughs> huh. I have to say I was very, very surprised and excited when I got the call about being cast in the role because I initially went in for Ruby. Okay, just look into the camera which of course is a very different role from Rosie. You know, two different worldviews, two different outlooks, two different perspectives. And so when they called and said, you know, we would really love for you to play Rosie, I got kind of excited because I said, you know what, I think I can have some fun with this character. Please tell me that's not the uniform they make you wear. The place is called Concubines, what do we expect? Mm. It's been an amazing experience, so different from other types of projects. The reason why we're in this industry, you know, to be able to tell beautiful and moving stories. And that's what this is. I got involved with the middle of nowhere because my manager just called me up one day for an audition. Rashad, I thought you were Rosie. Nah, no Rosie, just me. Look, I'm just dropping this off for D. Huh. His parole hearings today. Yeah, I know. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, you, you do that, Ruby. I had saw Ava's first film, I Will Follow. Um, I actually went to the premiere of it. One of my friends was in it. So um, when he had told me about it, I was all down to do it because I was a big fan of Ava. Yeah, I think I can handle all of this. No problem. 
You like my dark knight in shining armor. Yeah, kind of Batman meets Prince Charlie. <laughs> yeah. I'm with that. The opportunity to repeat um, working with Ava DuVernay, we did I Will Follow. And that film sort of set a precedent to me, the writing that you found when you work with a director like her. Why don't you stay? You don't know how many nights I parked out front just waiting to hear you say those words. All you had to do was invite a brother in. What you want me to tell you? I told you things were complicated. I told you that when we met. Well, I heard you when we met. What attracted me to doing these indie style films, or independent films, I should say, where you don't have the major studio backing financially. Not the money. <laughs> but you know what, the stories are better. If I could write down the most ideal Sundance experience, the best case scenario, I would have never imagined a turn of events like our Sundance. It was beautiful, it was amazing. I didn't realize how difficult it was to really get into Sundance. Had I known that, we probably wouldn't have made it. But I remember the day when, uh, when Ava told me the news and it was like, what? <laughs> I was so excited when the film uh, was chosen for Sundance. And, and so proud, proud of Ava, especially because she's so deserving, she's just brilliant. I thought we were going to Sundance from the very beginning. You know, I'll tell you one thing about Howard Barish. He never had a doubt about this whole Sundance thing. And so when we got the announcement that we were going to Sundance, I was like, yes, I told you we were going to Sundance. I'm excited, I am. And it's incredibly important to the life of a film that gets a start here. It marks you out as a film to watch. We were, were picked for US Dramatic Competition, 14 films, you know, out of 4,100 films that were submitted for Sundance. I mean, that in and of itself is such a huge achievement and a, and a huge uh, signpost as to the quality of, of the film. Sundance 2012, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my very first time at Sundance and I have had a ball. I have had a ball, you hear me? From the audience's responses to the parties and events. I got to a couple of the parties and, uh, you know, showed them a little bit of my moves a little bit. I don't know, I feel like I'm in a big family reunion. You know, I've been seeing actors I work with on The Wire and Treme and Red Tails and, you know, I'm like, wow. You know, and the fact that we're all here together at Sundance 2012, you know, with wonderful films and awesome filmmakers is so exciting. And I just think it's a real testament to where um, African-Americans in Hollywood are going. This Sundance experience being my second one, but first as a as a participant in, in a film, it's been uh, exhausting, but it's been absolutely one of the best blessings that I've ever had in life. Sundance, Sundance. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this Sundance experience has been nothing short of a dream come true. First of all, just the beauty of the landscape where we are. I mean, there are snow-covered mountains, and um, I have yet to see any moose, but they are here roaming the streets, I hear. And then to be here for this reason, for this project, it couldn't be any better. I am here because I am in Ava DuVernay's film, uh, Middle of Nowhere. <laughs> meeting all of the other filmmakers, meeting other actors who are equally as excited. It's been a wonderful experience. Well, the snow has been pretty uh, awesome. I mean, I've never experienced snow in my life, so uh, to be here right now with all this snow is just kind of like crazy for me. I mean, the other day was a little too much for me because it was snowing a little too much, but 
Everybody just is so passionate about what they're here doing, and it's uh, good to be around that. So my experience has just been awesome. I've just been enjoying every part of it. The minute we got there, the first night, we had a party at our condo. Great to be here. All because of this, baby. Yeah. To the next day, our world premiere. Middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. And there's probably nothing more exciting than the premiere of our film. There we go, premiere, about to go down. People were lined up for an hour in advance to get in. The audience received the film so well. And just how warm that room is. I mean, from the minute we walked in, it felt like we had the right audience. I'm going to bring her out right now, Ava DuVernay. Ava. There was a great Q&A at the end of it. You couldn't have asked for a better experience. We shot the entire film on location in Los Angeles. And we shot on a Sony F35 camera, and we did it all in 19 days. Middle of Nowhere is truly an independent endeavor. You know, we had amazing people like Paul Garns and Tulane Jones, who are our producers with Howard and I, um, our editors, Spencer Averick, our, our DP, Bradford Young, all to come together to really create something that was beautiful and truthful in a very kind of limited set of resources. So we shot the film in 19 days in Southern California, in, in and around LA County. We shot in real prisons, we shot on the rural streets of South Central LA, we shot in real buses. All those practical locations were just a great boon to the production, a, a shoot that was definitely humble in scope. I didn't see the film until I came to Sundance. And by the end of the film, I had a pain in my gut because I'd, it felt like I'd held my breath for two hours. Ava has the ability in this film, once she hooks you, she doesn't let you go. These characters don't let you go. The pacing of this film doesn't let you go. But at the end of it, you, you are so imperceptibly drawn into this film that you actually begin to breathe the breath of these characters. Don't be a martyr. A martyr. I'm your wife. You can't do this for eight years. But we'll see each other every weekend. I don't want you to stop from me, baby. We are somewhere in between, in a middle place. He's a convicted felon. I'm trying. We're trying. Come on. Let's go out. I can't, Rose. Hey, excuse me, sis. I thought that was you. I'm Brian. You can't see two feet in front of you. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm gonna try to be what's happening next. Baby, I'm trying to come home. We got something, don't we? The past has disappeared. The future, it doesn't exist until we get there. Well, most of all, the story was real, and uh, I like to see stories that I can relate to. Definitely the movie to see showed uh, black people beautifully. The performances were nuanced and honest in ways that were really quite refreshing. Sundance is considered the king of American independent cinema. And you know, it was a, an emotional roller coaster. Screenings, Q and A's, lounges, parties, food. By the time I got to the award ceremony. The directing award for dramatic film goes to Ava DuVernay. <laughs> from middle of nowhere. My name being called was um, like an earthquake. It was a completely seismic shift in reality at that point. Stunned, completely stunned, because just being in was enough. This is like blowing my mind. I'm excited about this new voice in filmmaking, this new female voice, woman of color. We need to see human stories. This is a way to tell them. So I'm really uh, excited to be here supporting this. It's something that's necessary. It's something that's necessary. So that's why I'm so excited about it. I just want to see new work, new voices, new expression, a new topic. I just, you know, I'm excited. Well, I'm here to celebrate and to uh, bring to, to the world yes. um, our film, Middle of Nowhere. Beautiful. Directed by the most talented Ava DuVernay. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You're up there as a director, but you know that you're representing so much work and so much talent and so much passion from so many people.
nice and tight. Really, like a family friend.